heard about marketing automation, about what it is and what to use. Um, and it figured out that it's mostly about content marketing uh, to create a digital customer journey. What, what this is uh, in detail, we will cover in uh, some uh, next slides. Then it's about targeting the right audience and automate stuff so that you don't have to do it manually. And everything is built around online marketing. And uh, at this time, I was twittering some time and I was uh, reading a lot of blog feeds some time. Okay, just come in, sit down. And I was um, reading a lot of blog posts, writing blog posts, consuming and uh, writing in social media channels and that consumed a lot of time and I was thinking about a way to automate it. And what I did is to look for some tools to automate this stuff to just push out some content and fire out any stuff that I, uh, that I found on the internet. But it figured out that it was useless. It saved me lots of time, but it had no effect at all. And I asked myself, why should I do this? And that was the point when I started to dig deeper into um, marketing automation. And in this session, I want to share some experience and focus on how to do it with Drupal. The most important thing is relevance. If you want to target somebody, you need to find the right content to target your individual audience. So no matter which channels you use, you have to communicate individually. There is no sense to push uh, this, how is it called in English, um, Einheitsfrei to anybody, um, yeah, because you miss the relevancy. And talking to everyone that you meet online individually is very time consuming, it's very expensive, and I found out that's not the way to go because otherwise you spend the whole day on social media, on Twitter, on uh, social feeds and whatever. Yeah, and the solution was uh, I, I tried to find something where I can put content inside where I can add my users, can categorize users, put them in different categories so that I can create content that is relevant for different users. That was uh, the challenge that I had when I started with marketing automation, not just firing some content out into the web, but to communicate with people individually. And the solution at this time was Drupal. Then I went back to my roots because what I know best was Drupal at least, so I could uh, create my content structure, I can create my workflows, I can create everything that I need to uh, collect data, to create content, and to push out content to any device. Uh, I think that's nothing new for you, uh, especially in Drupal 8, you have a very good connectivity to other tools, to other services using the Drupal web services. Um, I don't want to reinvent the wheel every time I need a CRM system, every time I need a content pool, every time I need a tracking system. I want to reuse existing systems and connect them with my Drupal Content Hub. Um, yeah, and why I want to do this is to build digital customer relationships. Um, before taking action, and I took action much too early because I start to build something without even knowing where I want to go and what I want to reach with my Drupal application or with my marketing automation machine. Um, so the first and most important thing is to listen to customers. That's nothing new, but it's always a challenge. It's always a challenge to find out what your target audience needs. Only if you know that, you can communicate with uh, relevancy. Yeah, and the next thing is categorization, creating sectors. Um, or templates or groups for your customers. Um, there are lots of CRM systems, we will find out some a few slides later, but you can do everything uh, in Drupal. You don't need to use uh, big blown CRM systems to start. You can start with Drupal, you have your fields, you have your notes, you have your profiles, you can add uh, any kind of fields to categorize your users. Um, yeah, those are some CRM systems that we already um, integrated with and where you can create uh, workflows not only in Drupal but use existing systems if you already have a CRM system in place. Um, I'm a very big fan of Agile CRM, does somebody know that? Okay, it's a very um, 
mighty CRM system that has open APIs, that has a connector to Drupal. You can integrate rules uh, using agile CRM data. I will show uh, how to do that later. Um, yeah, and it's a good pool to store customer information, add text to your users, and connect it to content in Drupal. There are also some um, systems like Hub, HubSpot, uh, Zoom CRM, or for the big companies, SAP, where Drupal integrates perfectly with. Um, then there was a time when I asked myself, okay, if I automate all this stuff and if I'm talking to my customers individually, um, do I have success with it? And to measure success, you need a goal first. That was uh, the next problem that I had. Um, I had many numbers and they were growing, but I didn't know what that means for uh, the SaaS product at the time. And um, yeah, eTracker or um, Google Analytics might be known by most of you guys. There are Drupal modules as well to integrate with the services. And um, Pivik, for example, is an open source system to track any kind of actions. Uh, you know Pivik, most of you? Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so I think the most common thing is Google Analytics as it integrates uh, perfectly with Google Tag Manager is well known to you guys. Okay, with Google Tag Manager you can create, yeah, you can, you can tag your users, you can integrate it with Drupal and use the Drupal rule system to um, control the Google Tag Manager actions. Um, yeah, and then the question was, what do I want to do with my uh, marketing automation stuff? The most important uh, thing is to win paying customers or to um, win people that download a white paper or to just get people to do action that you want them to do. And um, yeah, usually selling does not work like, okay, here's my product, please buy it. Um, I have a, a nice GIF image that describes it best. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> that's one action after another that brings you to the goal that you want to reach. Okay, And that's what marketing automation does. It's one step after another, always integrated with each other to, have a, to, to reach a final goal. And you are looking critical. You understand it, what I mean yeah, with it? No, I okay. <laughs> Um, did anybody use, uh, maybe that, that is nothing new that I tell you now in the following slides, uh, who uses rules in projects? Okay, okay. I thought more of you guys uh, who hates rules, who does no rules at all, or who is tired. <laughs> okay, so um, I will cover what is rules and how to use it in a few slides, but what we want to do with rules is to have Drupal with a a base of uh, content and with a pool of users and if you tag, for example, your, your users like uh, this is a marketing guy, this is a technical guy and you create content and tag your content then you know exactly which content matches to which user and you can show the right content to the right user and then show the marketing guy some techie information or show the technical guy some business information, for example. And uh, with rules you can um, create rules to decide which content should be shown to which user, for example. Um, and with those, uh, with these rule sets, you can um, create like an automation system to push a user from the first attention, like a blog post that is interesting for marketing people, to interest, like somebody signs up for your newsletter, to desire somebody wants the product and adds it to your, uh, to your cart to take action to buy it and process the checkout. That's the usual uh, yeah, buying process in any kind of yeah, sales process or web application. So that's what we call lead nurturing um, or sales funnel. Of course, you need to model this process first, otherwise you, yeah, you don't know, you have no idea uh, how to configure rules to, um, let's say, automate your sales process if you don't know the process. Yeah, and then we have those different 
uh, different layers, like we have, of course, a platform infrastructure um, that provides the basic technology to bring your content to the web. Then we have uh, data management, could be like a CRM system, a product management system, or any kind of storage to add your users with uh, data and text. And then you want to push um, content throughout different channels, like your e-commerce system, uh, different marketing channels, service channels, sales channels, or even your billing system at your point of sales. Um, and that's where we add the layer uh, Drupal on top of all these systems to provide relevant content and push this content to different systems. Uh, question here, because some people are looking a little bit like uh, they have questions in their mind. No. Yeah, um, and if we talk about this uh, top layer, the simplest thing is the landing page. Um, a few years ago, we started to, uh, or we stopped to develop pages for customers. We started to develop uh, components in Drupal that customers can use to build their own landing pages. I think you, um, if you go to the uh, to the next slide, yeah, those are the modules that we use today to provide a framework or a tool set of modules and. Um, and elements that a user or an author can use to create a separate landing page. Um, panels, paragraphs, media views, and blocks, everybody knows that, or is it new to some of you? Knows that? Some of you? New? Okay. So, panels is a system where you can um, create different so called panes. It can be a view, it can be a custom content, it can be uh, whatever content is in Drupal, and you can add it uh, via drag and drop on a certain position on, on your page. So you can build your page with uh, different elements, and those elements can be individualized, for example, using rules. Um, if you have a welcome message pane, for example, and you know the name of your user, as there is, uh, as he's already logged in, or there is a cookie placed, and you have a connection with your CRM system where you get the name from, then you can individualize these content panes. Then you can uh, welcome your user with her name, for example. Uh, paragraphs is a module to yeah, create different paragraphs. It's similar to panels, but uh, easier to use. It's not that mighty, not that flexible as uh, panels is but it's a good start if you want to start structuring your content with uh, different sections and not just um, provide a form like a note form where you can enter the title, visit big editor to enter your content and then several other fields because that's very static and you want, um, you want to have more dynamic elements to create relevant content for the users. The media module is nothing new, views and blocks I think that's also very common um, to you, and there is a distribution that uses those modules uh, very well. It's on the one side uh, Thunder, they use paragraphs uh, heavily, and there is Aquia Lightning that uses uh, panels heavily. Um, so I think Thunder does not like panels, and Lightning does not like paragraphs so much, that's why they uh, didn't put everything together. Personally, I like both, so. We try to put everything together. It's not an open distribution, but we did that for several projects. And if you want to have a demo how this could look like, uh, I could give you one. Yeah, so we moved away from creating single sites to creating content elements. That means if we ship a site to a customer that uh, should uh, serve content for marketing automation purpose, we only develop yeah, content elements that uh, have dynamic content and that are placed on uh, different positions on the landing page. And the big benefit is that you don't have to ask your developer every time you need a new page or page type um, to make a new deployment because that takes like two weeks and here you have all the tool sets that you don't need to run through the deployment process. Just create your landing page using track, track and drop elements and uh, that's it. And if you create a piece of content like a um, marketing automation guide, and I know this uh, piece of content targets P2 
people working in the marketing area. Then uh, usually we add uh, text using the Drupal taxonomy module to this content because if somebody uh, reads the content, I know, okay, he's interested in marketing. Then the user gets a tag and maybe he's added to the CRM system also with this tag. And if he returns next time to the page, I can read this tag and present him content that is relevant for this user because I know what he previously uh, read. Okay, now to answer the question about the rules module. Uh, the rules <coughs> module is a module to create events, conditions, and actions to create heavily dynamic workflows. Um, that could be publishing workflows, that could be workflows to fetch the right piece of content and present it to the current user. That means um, like an event could be a user visits your site or displays uh, the front page. A condition could be you could fetch like um, a tag from the user and if the user has a marketing tag then you can, um, that's the condition, the user is logged in, has a marketing tag and the action is uh, fetch the latest piece of content tag with marketing and present it to the user for example. And that allows to integrate with, um, with CRM systems to categorize your users and to fetch the right piece of content to create a uh, a relevant customer experience to yeah, create interest. Um, we can not only use this for Drupal, but we can also use it to push content to other devices. Um, the headless Drupal approach is coming to you guys. Does uh, somebody not know what is headless Drupal? Okay. So you can use Drupal without an interface. You can use Drupal that only that has no UI but just uh, web services, and those web services can be used to extract content. And if you have a mobile device or a ticketing system or a web application that is just built on AngularJS and not on native Drupal, um, you can use these web services to fetch again the right content using, for example, um, tags and display relevant call to actions. Um, yeah, that's again uh, the, how, to, how to do the lead nurturing process um, and if you have the process of your, uh, the sales process, you know in each and every step where the user stopped. If somebody does not complete the checkout, the question is why? Okay, if you added the product to the bus, uh, to the basket to the cart and didn't complete the checkout, the question is why? If user added a product to the cart, started with a checkout, but didn't process with a payment, the question is why. Usually you don't know that if you don't, um, if you don't tag these steps or tag, add text to the user if you stop in a certain uh, step of the process. And if you know where your user stopped, just again by tags, you can um, send relevant information uh, for example, using a newsletter that uh, offers you a 10% discount if you stopped just right before the payment starts. Because that lets me assume that the product was just too expensive. If you didn't place the product into the cart, then the product might not be relevant. But you were looking at the product, but for some reason it wasn't relevant enough to add it to the cart. And those are all information that you, that you know and that you should add to the user and only then you can um, publish or send content that is relevant to the user automatically. And all these things can be done with roots. To speak a little bit more technically, um, if you use the roots framework, you can do lots of uh, click via the UI, but you can also create your custom actions, rules and conditions by implementing uh, in Drupal 7, it was a hook in Drupal 8, I don't know, Carsten, what do we need to do in uh, Drupal 8 to create a custom rules action, implement a hook, or? Uh, I guess implement a plugin. Implement a plugin, yes, okay. And then you can do whatever you want. Um, so yeah, that always brings us back to the rules module, so if you don't use it today, I would recommend to uh, do it after the Drupal camp and have a look at it. There are many, many videos about this module. Uh, if I'm talking to other guys in the Drupal community, many uh, have 
the fear that it costs a lot of performance. Is it right? I, didn't ex I, I, never, I never had performance issues because of the roots module, to be honest. So it might, uh, it might be okay, but if you, uh, or realistic, but if you compare um, developing everything from scratch to have a better performance compared to just add another server to uh, have more performance for your site, I think it's much cheaper to use rules and add another server than to implement everything from scratch. Um, yeah, those are the modules that we use in the Drupal framework to um, build these uh, landing pages, to build content for mobile devices, to build content that are displayed in point of sale systems, in ticketing systems, in any kind of systems that display content. And the good thing about this um, approach to use panels and paragraphs um, and rules is that we give more, um, more power to the author. Um, I think mo most of you, I think most of you are developers, right? Drupal developers. Or is here a Drupal user that works with Drupal every day? Ah, okay. Uh, and I think you know the situation when you are looking at your Drupal form and you type in something and you want to... Uh, you expect something else, something to be more dynamic, or you just want to move one piece of content to another position, but if you just have a form, it's strictly not possible. And then you ask your developer team, can you do this and that, and then they tell you, okay, I can do it, it takes two days, and maybe process of one and a half weeks, and then you are happy you have your piece of content placed on the left side. You are smiling that you already had this situation? No, okay. Um, yeah, and that's uh, why we think creating components instead of pages, um, is just much more flexible for authors. Yeah, and that's um, already it. Now, as it is your session, I'm happy to maybe um, start a discussion or if you want to share some experience what you did with marketing automation, I would be happy. So, any question or any experience, any problems that we might discuss? Biggest problem, yeah. Did you turn this into a nice Drupal 8 distribution? Okay, I repeat the question. Yes. Uh, the question was if I turned this in a nice Drupal 8 distribution. Uh, no, I didn't because there is no single this. So that's just um, what we did is we just use Drupal as it is and use the Drupal modules that exist, mm -hmm. put them together mostly individually for each project. Um, yeah, so I think there is no like a marketing automation distribution or something like this, but Thunder or um, Lightning is a very good start to have at least these flexible content creation tools. Something else? Who's your typical audience? Who's your typical audience? You said B2C and B2B. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, the typical audience is every company that does online marketing. No matter if B2B or B2C, but this, uh, this whole marketing automation process is mostly targeted to companies that sell to uh, end, end clients, end users, end customers. Because, yeah. Are there use cases for uh, public clients, for example, universities, or you have also clients um, in the public yeah. uh, sector? Yeah. Because uh, marketing is not only for Absolutely. B2B, B2B yeah. but um, we love our, our users, our clients mm -hmm. and users. <laughs> uh, and how can we uh, get better our content better yeah. to, to the right user? Yeah, the question is if uh, there is a use case for the public sector, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think in the public sector it's not called marketing, but it's called communication. And um, But I think the issue is the same. It's you want to be relevant for your users. And you can use the same methods to uh, target your users individually. I think there is no difference. The thing is only you want to communicate individually and be relevant with content that really matches the need of the user. And here the same challenge to know your user and to have a data model that represents your user. That's the same in a, in a B2B company, in a B2C company, or in the public sector. Does it answer the question, or did you expect yes, something uh, else? But are there already uh, implemented use cases? You know, for example, um, are there modules or experiences uh, in the group community where this is um, um, yes uh, explained how to use, uh, how an approach could be? Um, mm -hmm. 
what yeah. aspects should be um, how often they can be um, trans transferred? Yeah, most mostly um, only based on Drupal user groups, like for a university. That's yeah, that's public sector most likely. Um, there you have uh, different user groups, uh, like a student, like a docent. Um, um, and to those different users, you can create content that matches their requirements, maybe based on, uh, on search uh, keywords that they entered into the search, so you can place a relevant content based on the previous search they did. But uh, most likely, from my experience, the public sector, they don't use CRM systems or something like this. Um, that's why, yeah, I think there is no such a heavy use case. And then we had here previously in a um, company where um, we had an integration with the SAP CRM system and then fetch data from the SAP system to get data from the user, then match it with the products they bought in the uh, ERP system, and then display, for example, um, a piece of content that could be interesting that shows him the next product he might buy. Uh, there, I, I didn't see this in the public sector. But if you have a use case, yes. I'm very happy to discuss it. Uh, well, one use case, but it's the uh, um our university, my university is um, already very, um, um, they, they are approaching very slowly to this, sec to this uh, application. Mm -hmm. they, uh, they have a lot of um, interesting uh, people, alumni, with yeah. money, yeah, yeah. or sometimes not, but um, <laughs> ancient students, ancient um, um, teachers uh, that are um, getting more interesting for, for the university. And, yeah. and that, um, and um, they use, for example, in my university, they use CRM system for this. And um, so they, um, the next step would be to um, integrate with the CMS system. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. And if, if, it, if they already use a CRM system, that's a very good start. If they already know how to structure the users, uh, maybe it needs to be done. The tool is the first thing, but how to use it is the second thing. Then it must have uh, open APIs, like REST APIs. And with the REST APIs, you can yeah do pretty much everything that uh, I explained here. Which CRM system is it? It's Microsoft. Thing. Yeah. So Dynamics or Microsoft yes. Dynamics? Yeah, they have everything that you need. Something else we have. Ah, oh, we need to stay 15 minutes here. <laughs> <laughs> you talked a yeah. lot. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you have any experiences with uh, Aquarium? Uh, not experience, only I know the concepts. I didn't use it yet. But if there is a question, maybe I can answer it. No, no. Because Acquia Lift does pretty much the things that I told here. Uh, it's like a, a pool where you can add users, where you can add categories and text to your users. It's, um, if you have a good CRM system, it can, uh, this challenge can be tackled by your CRM system. Acquia Lift, I think they integrate very well with, the, with our other Acquia tools, but I think it's not a must have to start with this. I have a question. You, you talk a lot about um, providing content to qualified contacts. Mm -hmm. So you already know um, because they are a customer from you or they, they downloaded something. But um, can, you say, can you share some experience about? the process to make an unqualified contact to qualified contact yeah, yeah, yeah. and about to keep his history mm -hmm. and what tools you are using for yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the question was um, how we can um, create a qualified, no, an unqualified user to become a qualified user. Um, yeah, that's what I told in one of my slides. Yeah, here. So. How to get data about what is interesting for the user is to um, process this AIDA funnel uh, for different actions. So you don't want to um, process the AIDA funnel first uh, directly to let the user buy a product, okay? That will not work. But to, uh, for example, present uh, the user a piece, uh, a teaser for a certain kind of content and ask him to click here to read this content, okay? And then you can. Um, that's what I what I told you with these tags. If we add the tag to the to the content, then we can add the tag to the user. If the user uh, read this page for let's say two minutes, three minutes, um, that can be done everything with Drupal itself. 
But if you want to do it more professionally, there's HubSpot, for example. Mm -hmm. And with HubSpot, um, yeah, it's a very mighty tool to do exactly this, okay. to, to create content um, that is um, tagged with different categories and to create um, yeah, user profiles based on the content they read and based on the behavior uh, on your site. I think HubSpot is the most common tool and the mightiest one to... Mercato also too. Ah, Mercato also, yeah. And there are also Drupal modules um, that you can use to integrate with your services. Did you already do that? Um, yes, we use HubSpot and we also uh, try Mautic. It's an open source alternative to okay. HubSpot and, and Mercato because Mercato and HubSpot are really expensive. Yeah, and Thousands per month. Yeah. Okay, and how's the other tool called? Mautic. Mautic. Mautic? Yeah, like okay. mounting only with an M. Okay, mounting. Okay. Yeah, thanks. I will definitely uh, check it out. Because it's just for me the interesting process to, yeah. to um, yeah, track someone down. Yeah, and absolutely. Yeah, but the basic process is to show something to the user, watch his behavior or her behavior, and then uh, yeah, make a conclusion and add a tag. That's it. If he moves away from the piece of content very quick, quickly, then you know it's not relevant for him, so you don't add a tag. Or even add a tag uh, as a negative tag, that might also work. That helps you to uh, collect data for his profile as well. Well, it's all really nice if you have a history of someone who is coming often to your page, mm -hmm. and he knows, okay, he was there 10 times yeah. um, in the last six weeks, and he always visited the part with the iPhones. For example, yeah, yeah. then you can you know better and can better a specific, a specific tag mm -hmm. as uh, when he actions one time only. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Something else? Yeah. What do you think is missing currently within all the well, the, the found triple modules that are available? What was still missing? The question is, what is still missing? Um, I don't miss a thing at the moment because I know the Drupal API very well and if I miss something you can code it. But do you have something special in mind? No, what I, what I think is that um, I, I'm, I'm about to give a uh, obsession about it later on today mm -hmm. is that within the Drupal community there's a lot of uh, talk about coding, uh, uh, basic modules um, and, and not specifically focusing on developing marketing yeah. modules. modules that Really focusing on maybe what you're talking about, marketing automation. Mm -hmm. um, so I was just wondering what, what you think uh, is missing. Yeah. So I think what was missing in Drupal 7 is a, um, a Drupal UI that makes life for authors easier to create individual content, individual landing pages with dynamic elements, not only with a static content that was pretty much a pain in Drupal 7. Yeah. But as Drupal 8 becomes more open, responsive, and has more uh, dynamic UI elements, I think everything is already there. You just need to use it in the right way uh, because if Drupal has, I don't know, 30,000, 50,000 modules, you need to find the right ones and then use it in the right way together. And that's a challenge in Drupal because there is no module that you enable and you have a marketing automation module or you don't even have an image gallery module or at least you should not use it, but you have single modules that provide infrastructure with components that you can use to build exactly the tool that you need. But of course, you need to understand how to do that. That's why it's a framework and not uh, like WordPress. You install it and here you go, you can work with a CMS. Yeah. So maybe one um, like would be that is uh, that we have distributions and yeah. we have the, all these individual things mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. put together and have sort to understand first what they do together and mm -hmm. uh, themselves. Um, but in between distribution, so, so it's a distribution for public. Uh, for um, um, for one industry, mm -hmm. um, uh, but maybe um, this uh, one company don't want to have um, this market automation, but the other wants. So um, the distribution is everything, but uh, to have kind of part of distributions yeah. focusing one target um, mm -hmm. is missing. And what is missing would be great to have. <laughs> okay. So the question, I think it's already there. Just to repeat the question, um, is uh, there are many distributions that target a different uh, industry, and they have lots of things, lots of features. But if you don't need everything, what should you do? That was the question, right? If you if you don't need all the features that are in a distribution, you don't know what to do. If you use the distribution or not. Yeah. Or from the other side, you have you have some um, distribution parts. So uh, I've read a. Um, 
part uh, for market automation mm -hmm. and do the other things, to put them together or to leave them off. So not to be successful and to put off, but to, uh, but to uh, put them together. So yeah. to make it But that's what uh, installation profiles already provide. If you if you run an installation process, you can, if it is built in the right way, you can uh, enable and disable different features. Of course, you need to build the architecture in a way that you can disable several features. It's not always possible, uh, but that should be that should be the, the right way. But um, the configuration is still missing. So if you yeah. put these things together, um, yeah. so we learn from custom composer <laughs> yeah. that you install all these modules, but you have these modules naked. Yeah. Uh, but the configuration to so um, to to fit this this uh, this. This model package mm -hmm. uh, to to um, serve a certain target. Yeah, um, this is still missing. So yeah, no, I agree. Plus, plus yeah. Uh, but that could be accomplished with features, for example. If you build, and that's nothing. Uh, that's what a distribution does. It is not custom code. It is a bundle of modules configured for a specific use case, and this configuration is put into features. And those features can be enabled or disabled during the installation process. And you could also like um, create separate features for yourself for your university, then add them to a, a separate Git repository and reuse them, for example, based or in combination with Acquia Lightning or any other kind of distribution that you already have. And then you have uh, that missing thing. I think that's exactly what features do. Yeah. I want to add a little thing to this. Uh, with the change of uh, having the peer-reviewed developer in Drupal.org, everybody who has a Drupal.org account can now make a feature set module yeah. and give patches upon each other's feature sets and therefore not reinvent the wheel all the time, but collaborate. Yeah, but, I mean, yeah, that's, that's the, the idea and the power of Drupal that you don't need to reinvent everything from scratch, but there are many things that other people already did, and uh, you just need to understand it and then you can use it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you're looking for the coffee break. If you have uh, some, some additional questions, I'm there to take a coffee break too, and I'm um, happy to have a further conversation. Okay, thank you very much.